There was a question on one of the Facebook groups asking if anyone spliced arrows and I said yes I did and volunteered to do a little video showing my arrow splicing jig nice and close I can talk you through it ah the joy of modern cameras I did the whole video and none of it was in focus because even though this was filling the frame the camera chose to focus on something that was right in the background so we'll have another go this is the block oak block hole down the middle initially drilled about eight millimeters but then honed out to the correct size by wrapping a bit of sandpaper around a shaft and pushing it in and out this little block here is just glued on so that when it's mounted in the vise thusly you're sawing at a sensible angle rather than banging your elbows on things it's marked out alongside where the hole goes 5 16th a couple of pencil lines to enable you to cut your guide slot at a suitable angle to give you a, a reasonable length of splice there you can see the, that's the resulting splice now this gives you an idea of the overall dimensions blocks about four inches long just over two inches wide inch and a half deep the guide slot goes as long as it goes past the shut hole for the shaft you're all right but of course where it's been used multiple times it tends to go deeper and deeper little grub screw there to lock the end of the shaft when it's in place to stop it twisting and turning so you push your shaft in there lock the grub screw make your saw cut I'll just do this one again as a bit of a demo nip the screw up just as well I've got nothing better to do I mean made the whole video once nice light strokes of the saw and you'll get a good clean cut you'll feel when it goes through the shaft there we go there's our angled splice and you can see it's just over two inches long so there's a good a good glue area there and so I just offer up the two bits put some decent epoxy on there um, you know one of the slow ones bit of masking tape to hold it in position bind it with thread um, peer down it to check the alignment and leave it overnight if you've got a splice near the tip like this a tiny bit of misalignment is not going to really matter you wouldn't want to splice right in the middle of the arrow one thing to watch out there is when you glue it up it's easy for it to slip slightly to exaggerate you end up like that with a thin bit you're better to slightly overlap the other way and end up with it slightly fat because then you can sand off the excess here's one of those things if you want to try it on a couple of bits of scrap arrow you know if you've got a load of arrows that are all broken off just behind the point you wait till a load of them have accumulated you use all your broken bits and bobs and you can suddenly find you've refurbished half a dozen arrows quite quickly for very little cost anyhow that's it hopefully that's filmed a bit better this time so on some of my field arrows I've done a simple V splice like that and I've found I made a little jig a bit like that where I push the main shaft into a block of pine that's had a V cut out of it and I saw a bit of a V out there is a theory that says oh you just cut a slot and you force this end in and it spreads it out but of course it tends to split the wood even if you steam it so you're better off cutting a bit of a V cut a bit of a V in the parent shaft bind it with some thread to stop it splitting sand a V onto your hardwood tip push them together, glue them, bind them, leave them overnight they're very good for field shooting, they're much stouter than an ordinary pine or cedar shaft and then just to prove I could do it I did a fancy you know, four point footing 
uh, total pain in the backside. I had to make a jig to do it that I used on me um, on my little milling machine. It's very pretty, but I frankly don't know why anyone would bother. The simple angled splice actually works perfectly serviceably for rough shooting and field arrows. That is very nice for for tough field arrows.